The pattern I have here is from my previous tutorial, which is a classic princess bustier that has a deep plunging neckline. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to draft a bust pad for this pattern. And I'm also going to show you how to attach your laminated foam to this pattern. Okay. Um, so the first thing you want to do is to walk the center front and the side front pieces together starting from the waistline and then you want to mark where the center front piece ends on the side front which is this point here now you want to come down one centimeters which is three eighths of an inch from this point and then come in from the actual side seam with one inch now come down from the actual armhole toward this one inch mark with quarter of an inch. Using my French curve, I'm going to connect both points together like so. Next, we're going to connect this point to the under bust using my French curve like so. So just position your French curve like so and connect. Now for the center front piece, you can follow the outline of your bust radius and connect from the the under bust toward the center front like so or you can just simply place your French curve and connect from the under bust toward the center front like so next slip in a piece of paper and trace out the pattern and also make sure you transfer your notch okay so once the pattern is traced out you want to alight it and then the only part you'll be adding seam allowance is around this part. So you're going to add one eighth of an inch around this part. Okay. And then you also want to repeat the same for the center front piece. The reason we're adding just one eighth of an inch is because you don't want that portion after sewing to be, you know, very bulky. So you adding just one eighth of an inch is going to minimize the bulkiness around that area. Moving on, cut out a fabric that is wide enough and long enough to accommodate this pattern, which is half of the front. So for the whole front, you're going to cut two of this size of fabric and then give it a good press. So now you're going to carefully place your pattern where you want it to be. And what I like to do is to come out like quarter of an inch to half of an inch or one inch and cut around the parameter of the pattern. So I'm not cutting exactly as my pattern is. Instead, I'm going out like quarter of an inch and cutting around that parameter. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to interface my fabric before I cut out my actual pattern. Okay. You might be wondering why don't I interface this old fabric I have in front of me. The reason for this is that I want to manage my interfacing. Okay. So if I interface this old fabric with, I'm going to end up, you know, wasting my interfacing and also wasting some of that fabric. So now after cutting, I'll go ahead and interface my fabric like so. Um, it's very important to interface your fabric before cutting because most fabric will shrink after interfacing. So let's say you cut out the pattern before you interface. After you interface, you place back your original pattern. You find out that they are no longer equal. It's going to shrink. So to avoid this shrinkage, it is advisable you interface your fabric before you cut. Okay. Um, so I'm doing my best to manage my interfacing. You can see that I'm joining the interfacing on this portion of the pattern. So yeah. Now I'm going to give this a good press. And once this is done, I'll go ahead and place my pattern on it and then cut it out. So at this point, I'm going to place my pattern and then cut it out. So you also want to repeat the same process for your lining piece. I would advise just in case you don't want to put interfacing on your lining, make sure you give your lining a very good press, press it very well, steam it and press it before you cut out 
your lining. Don't cut out your lining without ironing your lining, okay? Now the next important step is to transfer your notches from your pattern to your fabric. Or you can just create the notches directly on your fabric. So right now I'm going to create my notches directly on the fabric. So I'm going to mark one notch where the center front piece ends on the side front. So one notch is going to be here. One notch will be at the bust point, which is here. One notch is going to be at the under bust. And then you also need to mark these notches on the center front pieces. Next, I'm going to add two more additional notches. So I'm going to mark one, one inch above the bust point and mark another one, one inch below the bust point. So in total, I have four notches on the center front piece. Why on the side front piece, I have five notches altogether. Now for the placement of the laminated foam, you want to mark where it's going to start on your fabric and where it's going to end. So remember on the side front, it starts one centimeter below the first notch and it ends at the under bust. And also remember the seam allowance added to the bodice pattern is half of an inch. Why the seam allowance added to the bust part pattern is one eighth of an inch. So what I like to do, I like to mark in one centimeters from the top to the under bust, okay? And then I connect these points together to form a line. So this line is going to be the position where my, um, my laminated foam is going to sit, okay? Um, so this might appear to be too much, but for the sake of accuracy, I would advise you follow this procedure. If not, you can just simply eyeball the position of where you want the laminated foam to be and go ahead and press it. But as I said, for the sake of accuracy, this is what I would usually do. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for the side front. So the laminated foam is going to start from the under bust. And then I'm going to mark all the way one centimeters until I get to one centimeter below the notch on the top. So that is where the laminated foam is going to end. Next, you want to trace your bust part pattern onto your laminated foam and then go ahead and cut it out. Next, you want to place the laminated foam onto your hemming gum and then cut it out. So you can either place the laminated foam on top your hemming gum or you can place the hemming gum on top the laminated foam, which I find much um, easier to do and then cut it out. Now you want to place the laminated foam together with the hemming gum onto your fabric. Okay. Remember the laminated foam sits one centimeter below the first notch on the top and sits just at the under bust. So what I like to do, I reduce the heat first on my pressing iron and just give it a press lightly. And then I throw um, a cloth on top of the laminated foam, then increase the heat on my pressing iron and then give that a good press. Once that is done, turn it to the right side and give it a good press again. So now we're going to repeat the same process on the center front piece. So this time I place the hemming gum on top of the laminated foam before cutting because it was, I think it's easier to do this, you know. So now I'm going to place the laminated foam together with the hemming gum onto the fabric, making sure it sits on the right position. And then I throw a cloth on top and give it a good press. Now turn it to the right side and press again. So guys, we're done with applying the laminated foam to the fabric. So the next step would be to join both pieces together. Now, because I've marked notches onto the fabric, joining both pieces is going to be very easy to do. 
at this point okay so now i'm going to just mark my seam allowance from the waistline to my under bust and then i'm going to pin both pieces together notch to notch once that is done i'll go ahead and pin the rest parts together and then take this to my sewing machine and join the pieces together while sewing i would advise you carefully mark in your seam allowance so the seam allowance i added to the bodies is half of an inch so i'm going to carefully mark half of an inch as i go it is important you get this seam accurately because any mistake you make is going to show on the right side so i would advise take your time and mark in your seam allowance just the way you place it on your pattern and then sew so next you want to place notches along the seam like so and then using a bust arm you want to carefully open the seam and then give it a good press on the wrong side now you're going to turn this to the right side this time you're not just going to press but you're going to press and mold okay so just keep pressing and molding add in some steam and then press and mold press and mold okay now once this is done you should have something like this at this point if you want more volume on the bust you can go ahead now and tuck your already made bust cup onto the seam okay now you're going to repeat the same process for the lining piece as well whatever you did for the fabric you're going to do for the lining as well well guys this brings us to the end of this tutorial i hope you find this video helpful if you do remember to leave a comment like this video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed thank you so much for watching i will see you on my next one till then have a beautiful day